attention and respectful silence during the presentation of the callers by the UNLV Air Force and Army ROTC Honor Guards, followed by the National Anthem. Please stand. Still 
Thank you to our vocalist, Cassandra O'Toole, soprano, and J. On Benton for the piano accompaniment. Please be seated. I am Rhonda Montgomery, chair of the UNLV Faculty Senate. I am an associate professor and director of student success in the William F. Hara College of Hotel Administration. We are here today for President Snyder's State of the University Address, and we are delighted to have many distinguished guests joining us in the audience. If you would please stand as you are introduced. We welcome representing Congressman Dina Titus, Michael Naft. Senator Joyce Woodhouse. From the Nevada System of Higher Education, representing our Board of Regents, Regent Cedric Creer. Regent Ron Connect. Regent Allison Stevens. Scott Wasserman, Chief of Staff and Special Counsel to the Board, and former Regents Mark Alden and Carolyn Sparks. We also welcome John Lee, the Mayor of North Las Vegas. Thank you all for joining us. When I campaigned for the position of Vice Chair of Faculty Senate, I campaigned on two issues. The first was to improve the services provided to our students, faculty, and staff. The second was to make UNLV's Faculty Senate more relevant by increasing our shared governance through involving more faculty on Faculty Senate committees and making our committees more responsive uh, to the needs of faculty and staff. I was thrilled when President Snyder was named as our president because I had the opportunity to work with President Snyder when he was dean of the Hotel College. Although we did not agree on everything, I learned that President Snyder and I shared many common traits. We both bleed rebel red. We are both passionate about what we believe, and we are both willing to listen to opposing views without the need to vilify those who do not agree with us. President Snyder is committed to improving the service provided to students, faculty, and staff. You need only to look to his background in industry and his work on the Fremont Street Project and the Smith Center to understand his commitment to a collaborative approach to getting things accomplished. I've told many of my colleagues that I believe we have many great opportunities and challenges ahead of us at UNLV, but we have the right person at, at the right time and in the right place to help us make the most of those opportunities and to address these challenges. And so without further ado, it is my great honor to introduce UNLV's president, Donald Snyder. Thank you, Rhonda, for those kind words, and thanks to all of you for being here. This is a wonderful crowd here, and I appreciate uh, you being here and, uh, and listening to what we have to say today. Uh, uh, I am pleased to welcome you to this year's State of the University Address. This is a year of change for UNLV, uh, positive change, I believe, and I'll be taking us through the major changes and what they will mean for all of us here at the university uh, and in the community. But first, I'd I thought I'd spend a little time telling you about how my background relates to UNLV and my presidency. 
I've had a connection to UNLV for uh, more than 27 years now. First as a member of the community, a freshly relocated banker from California, joining the Board of Trustees of the UNLV Foundation uh, in 1988, serving as the chairman of the board uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the foundation uh, for five years from 1996 to 2001, chairing UNLV's first and only to this point comprehensive fundraising campaign, the $500 million event, Invent the Future campaign, uh, and its successful conclusion at the end of 2009, all before joining UNLV as the dean of the William F. Hara College of Hotel Administration in 2010, and now as president of UNLV while the formal search for, a, for the permanent president is conducted. During these past 27 years, I've worked with five presidents here at UNLV, Bob Maxson, Kenny Gwynn, Carol Harder, David Ashley, and Neil Samatrisk. Each of them provided uh, me value in helping step up to the challenge of serving as president of UNLV. So I've been involved with UNLV uh, one way or another from the moment that my wife Dee and I set foot in Las Vegas because I believe that you cannot have a great community without a great university. Professionally, I've been blessed with opportunities to serve in senior executive uh, capacities in two industries before coming here to UNLV. I've had a chance to serve on corporate and community boards of directors for nearly 30 years. Among other things, all of this has provided me the opportunity to direct uh, to, uh, to direct or to facilitate several major strategic initiatives during this period of time. I've also been involved in other Las Vegas firsts uh, since I've been in the city, again because I believe in a strong community involvement. Rhonda mentioned two of these, the Fremont Street Experience and the Smith Center for the Performing Arts. For every big venture or strategic effort, I've approached the planning process in basically the same way what I oftentimes refer to as my strategic thinking model, something that many of you have heard me talk about before. During this academic year, as a way to better position UNLV for success uh, when our new president will join us, whenever that is, I'm applying that model as our path to Tier 1. I'll walk you through that process and talk about why your input into our process uh, will be so crucial. But first, I want you to go on a visioning exercise here with me uh, this afternoon. What will, what will UNLV look like 20 years from now when it's an established Tier 1 Carnegie Research Very High University? We have a glimpse uh, into the future already uh, with Skyworks Aerial Systems, a local startup uh, company founded by two UNLV students, Greg Friesmuth, uh, uh, the CEO and founder of Skyworks Aerial Systems, and Ginger Zhang, Skyworks Chief Operating Officer. Uh, Greg and Ginger developed Skyworks while studying here at UNLV and participating in the College of Engineering Senior Design Competition. They've been working with mechanical uh, engineer professor uh, uh, Wunsum Yim, uh, who serves as technical advisor to Skyworks as well. Dr. Yim, could you please stand so that we can recognize you? Uh, Greg and Ginger, uh, why don't you give us a demonstration of your UAV? How, how incredible is that? Uh, 
you can you can only imagine all the things that that's going to be able to do and what these uh, what these former students uh, are going to do with their careers so thank you Greg and Ginger for your contributions to help position UNLV for the future Skyworks, as you probably heard, uh, won the 2014 Nevada Business Plan Competition and, very impressively, the Innovation Challenge Competition in Chicago, where it outperformed teams from Northwestern, MIT, and Cornell, just to mention a few. That company that they formed now employs 14 UNLV students and graduates, and I couldn't be more proud than I am of them. Let's talk a little more about what we'll look like 20 years from now. Carnegie Research Very High Universities are rare. Only 108, the top 2.3% of higher education institutions rank in that Tier 1. There are 75 public universities designated as tier, as tier 1 in that group. 50 of those 75 public universities have medical schools. UNLV is currently ranked just outside that uh, uh, Tier 1 designation, but still among the top 4.5% uh, uh, 4, 4 of higher education institutions, or as a Carnegie Research High University, clearly a good foundation on which to build. Tier 1 universities have grants and contracts uh, totaling at least $100 million, or more than twice the amount currently at UNLV. They, they, they award more than 200 doctorate degrees per year. UNLV currently awards about half of that number. Tier 1 universities have a level of overall academic excellence and a six-year graduation rates that exceed the national average of 55 percent, well ahead of our graduation rate today. Of course, 20 years from now, all of these benchmarks are likely to increase as well. But my main point is that 20 years from now, we'll be enhancing our state budget and tuition revenue with significant grants for research and creative work. We'll have more philanthropic support. We'll be graduating more PhDs. Our graduation rate will be significantly higher than it is right now. And our medical school will have been firmly established and will be successfully meeting the needs of our community. Some of our changes will have occurred much sooner uh, than that 20-year time frame. We have just announced, as you may have seen in the press, uh, that SWITCH uh, will, uh, will connect UNLV via its high-speed fiber optic network to Intel's new Cherry Creek supercomputer housed at, at the SWITCH SuperNAP. Here's a picture uh, that we used to celebrate that just the other day. Uh, Intel will dedicate 60% of its uh, supercomputer's computational capacity to UNLV creating a true partnership and helping UNLV play a major role in Southern Nevada's technology revolution. Hopefully you have seen some of the wonderful press coverage we have received in the past two days, but stay tuned. This partnership will attract national news in both academic and technology publications. It is truly a big deal. This partnership could not have happened, uh, could, would not have been possible without the incredible vision, leadership, and generosity of Rob Roy, Switch's founder and CEO. We are so fortunate to have Rob and Switch uh, in Southern Nevada, to have uh, had uh, him open the dialogue with Intel, and now to have this wonderful collaboration between Switch, Intel, and UNLV. We are now strategically aligned directly with one of our state's highest priorities, priorities for economic development, and we will do our part uh, to help in that regard. So what will be uh, different about our community 20 years from now? What will we be like as a Tier uh, 1 Carnegie Research Very High University? We need your input uh, and engagement now in strategically thinking about how to become and define our Tier 1 uh, our Tier 1 University and its vision and how better to connect us to the community uh, and to the world as we have today with SWITCH and Intel. Let's talk about how the vision will be manifested with our various constituencies in our community and around our campus. For our academic faculty, you will have seen us invest more in our current faculty to give you the tools to win more grants and even for those fields which don't traditionally compete for grants, you'll find more support to help you do your research and creative activity. You'll get more alerts for funding possibilities, more help in writing applications, and more help in managing your research expenditures. Even more important, UNLV will have found new ways to help you work on interdisciplinary issues. 
I know that most rewards come to faculty at the unit level and not on an, inter, on an interdisciplinary level, but we must establish easier ways for you to, for you to work uh, together across units. That point about interdisciplinary work is important. Universities cannot have academic silos if we want to think about the hardest of hard issues and if we want to think about creative ways to solve real world problems. 20 years from now, UNLV's Tier 1 status will have brought uh, together various disciplines to share ideas and research through innovation and collaboration, research that makes our society and our community better. What else will be different uh, for our academic faculty? We will have found new ways to publicize your teaching, your research, your creative uh, activity, and community outreach. We will have added colleagues to increase the size of our academic faculty, uh, additional research faculty, and additional faculty who will join you in doing high quality and creative teaching. We will see more graduate students and more graduate student support. Uh, you will have the tools you need to innovate across all of your very dis uh, disciplines, and UNLV will be recognized as an academic brand name, a useful byproduct of being a Tier 1 university. For our administrative faculty and those uh, of you who are members of our classified staff, you will see better processes and better communication about those processes. You will be able to do your jobs more efficiently, and I hope that in return those processes will help you find, uh, uh, your, uh, find more job satisfaction in what you do. The increase in grant funding uh, that I mentioned a few minutes ago will help to fund critical support positions, will help restore operating budgets, and will help us invest in technology solutions to, for example, help us monitor the status of our work and our projects. You will have more opportunities for professional development programs, some of which will be uh, funded by these grants. You will be able to take even more pride in the UNLV brand name, and all of this increased research activity will have spurred more economic development in Las Vegas and in Nevada. Part of making uh, UNLV a world-class institution must include ensuring that uh, the campus is, is literally built for success where the facilities and the co-curricular offerings attract and retain students, and where all of us can come to work knowing that we have better tools to do our work better. Uh, this, issue is particular, uh, this, this issue is partly about physical infrastructure and partly about the ethos of the institution. And in both cases, the goal is to create and sustain attributes that bring people to, get, uh, to the university and create a lasting bond. We will be a place where we can all up our game and get better satisfaction uh, out of our time here. A stronger UNLV will mean that your family will have more economic opportunities as well, that our region will have seen an improved, uh, a, an improved and more resilient economic environment, and that a significant part of UNLV's research will have resulted uh, in a strong return on investment of state funding in UNLV so that we can justify more investment in our people and in additional and repurposed facilities. You may have gotten a feel for what uh, additional investment in UNLV will be like, having just read the announcement uh, of a $1 million grant from Tesla to fund advanced battery research here at UNLV. Tesla's agreement to build a gigafactory in Reno will also result in UNLV getting to work on this very, very important project for our state. I'm very pleased that Tesla's review of our capabilities in battery research prompted it to select us as a partner in its most critical research. Two of our battery research team members are in the audience here today. Dr. Quang uh, Kim and uh, Yushan Zhao, uh, could you please stand and be recognized? This is truly an incredible opportunity for our university, and we're in very good hands with you and your colleagues, so thank you for what you're doing. The state's return on its investment in us and the additional influx of private and federal government investment will be rewarded, not just on campus, but throughout our economy. And now, if you're a student, the overall benefit of UNLV's Tier 1 status 20 years from, 20 years from now uh, is that your degree will be worth more. The better we are as a university, the more doors that will open for you, not just at the start of your careers, but throughout your lives.
The principal hallmark of a highly esteemed research university is an engaged faculty that includes many leading thinkers in their fields. This engagement of faculty in research and innovation uh, infuses their teaching with the most current knowledge and connects them and their students to the latest thinking in academia and in industry. In this way, students benefit from the research activities of their professors, and their professors benefit from the engagement inherent in world-class programs and research. In particular, if you are a graduate student, you already understand the importance of research funds and faculty mentoring. 20 years from now, you will have enjoyed the benefit of your degree for quite a while, and your successors will have experienced more funding for their graduate research and for their own stipends. The increased faculty size will have translated into more faculty mentors to guide your successors with their own research. What about undergraduates? Of course, 20 years from now, UNLV will have uh, been long recognized as an academic brand name, opening up more opportunities for our students, both while they're here and after they graduate. But there's more. Undergraduates will enjoy significantly better graduation rates, a good investment for them, a good investment for us, and a good investment for our state. Our faculty will have enhanced their uh, ex expectations for our students in terms of challenging you intellectually and providing you with fellow students from around the globe. 20 years from now, our students will be able to expect more from us and from each other, and will be able to deliver on those expectations. We will have more faculty members, which will allow us to offer more courses and more opportunities to sequence those courses and provide a variety of times for you to take them, making the, making the process of getting your education more effective and more efficient. Of course, our undergraduate ex uh, of course, our undergraduates experience the opportunity for hands-on research now, such as in Professor Mark Yosiloff's Gaming Innovation course, which, which saw students patent 12 new games in one semester, an incredible accomplishment. This innovative course received national attention uh, as a news story on CBS. story you will see only on CBS this morning, gambling on the future of betting. Ben Tracy takes us inside a Las Vegas college course where students can earn a lot more than good grades. This does not look like any college laboratory I've ever been in. Well, it's probably the most fun college laboratory that anybody's ever been in because it's our gaming lab. Mark Yosiloff is the director of the Center for Gaming Innovation. That's the kind of program you offer when your university is in Las Vegas. A lot of people have ideas for casino games and have no idea what to do with those ideas. One black color over here. Casino games are intellectual property. Besides the basics such as blackjack and poker, casinos have to pay royalties every month to the person or company who invented them. It's a $100 million a year industry and it's basically pure profit. So at the end of the day, the odds are better that you'll make a fortune inventing a game than actually playing it in a casino? There's very few people sitting on my side of this table that will do as well as where you're sitting uh, on the dealer side of the table. It's good to own the game. Very good to own the games, yes. And let's make sure this works out correctly. His student, Hien Nguyen, knows just how good. This week, she sold her idea for a video version of the Asian tile game Paigao to the Konami Gaming Company. That's her signing the deal Wednesday on her 21st birthday. She's now old enough to gamble. Can you tell me how much they paid you for your idea? Oh, I'm sorry, I can't tell no. you. Can we assume it's a lot? Yeah, it's a huge steer. <laughs> it's huge. Yeah. Her two classmates also have patents pending on their ideas. How many of you are willing to tell me the specifics of your actual game? <laughs> no takers? It's that secretive. Well, how, how come it's so secretive? The competition is really high. A lot of major companies, they have similar games. That's why patents are so important. Yosiloff is the former CEO of a major gaming company. And when he started this program at UNLV a year ago, he wasn't betting a whole lot on his students. You have 17 students. How many patents did you think you would get? Somewhere between zero and one, truthfully. How many patents did you end up with? We have already filed eight or nine. There will be 12. They are adding to record global gambling growth, fueled by the Asian island of Macau near Hong Kong. 
It had $45.2 billion in gaming revenue last year. Nevada had $11 billion. But if the ideas for casino games are created in Nevada, the state's gaming industry can continue to rake in royalty revenue worldwide. So it's made the casinos rich and it's made people like you pretty rich. Well, I, I don't know about that. You're, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> but it's, is it accurate? It certainly has enhanced the entertainment product that casinos offer. I'll leave it at that. After all, you don't win at gambling by showing your hand. For CBS This Morning, Ben Tracy, Las Vegas. I can't tell you how much in positive feedback we've received uh, from that coverage. I'm, I'm very proud of what's, what's been done there. But imagine 20 years from now, our students will enjoy many more courses, just as creative, which will give them similar opportunities. We'll be able to celebrate even more successes, like our students' recent success in the Solar Decathlon. Last fall, an, interdis an interdisciplinary team of UNLV students and faculty with financial and in-kind support from community businesses topped every other American university in the International Solar Decathlon Competition. The U.S. Department of Energy Competition challenged university students to design, to build, to maintain, and to market a sustainable solar-powered home. Desert Soul is now prou proudly on permanent display at the Springs Preserve and really speaks to the quality of our students and our faculty here. The effort took uh, two years and a team of more than 60 students uh, to compete. Uh, Eric Weber, an assistant professor of architecture, was the principal investigator for the team. It's a testament to our students' ability to compete and succeed on the biggest stage with the world's top universities. Uh, and I think that this team and Professor Weber deserve a, a round of applause. Thank you. The Solar Decathlon is just one example. Uh, in 20 years from now, our students, including our undergraduates, will have even more opportunities to work with our faculty on research. And what about our alumni who are in the audience today? What will be different 20 years from now for you? Here's what you'll be able to do for each other. When you uh, contact a fellow rebel, that person will take the time to help you because we will have established a tradition that rebels will pay their education forward. You'll have found ways to pay it back, too, with increased opportunities for connections with professors and students at UNLV. You'll come back to campus for support as you advance in or change careers throughout your lifetime. And you'll have experienced increased pride in the prestige of UNLV and the value of your degree. More doors will open for our, our rebels all over the country and all around the world. And while we're talking about alumni, how many of you saw the Smith Center's presentation of Kinky Boots here last week or the week before? Quite a few people in the audience. Uh, a UNLV uh, alumnus, uh, Stephen Booth, uh, stars in that production, uh, which has now embarked on its national tour. Here he is right in the middle. <laughs> Somebody suggested that I wear kinky boots today, but I decided that wasn't the right thing to do. Uh, Steve is a 2004 UNLV graduate with a BA in theater arts and performed on this very stage during his collegiate uh, days here at UNLV. You'll see rebels throughout our community, uh, both local uh, uh, and worldwide, as UNLV's influence continues to grow. Remember when I said that when I came to Las Vegas, I knew that we couldn't have a great community without a great university. Well, I've changed my view a bit in that regard. Now I believe that we can't have a great community without a great university connected to that community and beyond. So when I think about Las Vegas, about Southern Nevada, and about Nevada as a whole and beyond, I think about how the broader community will have benefited uh, from our path to Tier 1. For one thing, in 20 years, our medical school won't uh, just change health care uh, here in Southern Nevada, although it will obviously do that. It will be a true academic health center. Its high-quality research will help people all over the world. We project that the UNLV School of Medicine will more than double our federally funded uh, research here at UNLV by the time that it is 10 years old. In my 27 years of work with UNLV, I know of nothing that will elevate UNLV and its impact on our community more than this new UNLV School of Medicine. I'm very proud of the work being done by our new planning dean, Dr. Barbara Atkinson, in leading this effort. 
Dr. Atkinson, could you please stand so that we can recognize and thank you for what you're doing? I will tell you that she's in a full, a full sprint getting around our community, talking, about the, uh, talking with the full range of people that are important to be part of this process, and I really am proud of what she's doing. I'm equally proud of the support from our Board of Regents and our Chancellor. With Chancellor Claych's tremendous leadership, uh, the budget uh, uh, for the first two years of startup funds was enthusiastically approved by the Board of Regents at its meeting on August 22nd. That budget has now been submitted to the governor, to Governor Sandoval, and the Nevada legislature. Uh, that, is a, that was an incredibly important step forward uh, for the School of Medicine here at UNLV. Nevada is unable to meet the current health care needs of, its, uh, of our citizens now, and Las Vegas is the largest urban area in the, in the United States without a public medical school. The UNLV School of Medicine will be an innovative center for teaching built on areas of current strength both here at UNLV today and in our broader medical and healthcare community uh, throughout the Las Vegas area and in terms of meeting our healthcare needs of this region at the same time. For instance, our School of Medicine will develop uh, research programs that will coordinate with the Cleveland Clinic Lou Ruvo Center for Brain Health, whose focus, as I think all of you know, is to care for patients with Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and multiple sclerosis and provide high-level clinical trials research. We will collaborate with UMC, the new VA hospital, which is a wonderful addition to our community, private hospitals and healthcare professionals throughout the valley. Toro University, the Roseman School of Medicine, which is also in formation, and of course, our state's current public medical school, the University of Nevada School of Medicine in Reno. But we will, all, but we will also have wonderful opportunities to build on existing programs already in place at UNLV. Two existing areas of strength within UNLV include radiopharmacology and computational science with large databases, both of which will be leveraged uh, as the UNLV School of Medicine develops. Imagine, too, the interactions with our other health-related programs at UNLV, including our schools of allied health sciences, dental medicine, nursing, and community health, all working with colleagues from across campus and across the community to make the lives of Nevadans and those who travel to Nevada for health care better. Another connection for our medical school is The Practice, a UNLV community health clinic that provides a greatly needed resource to Southern Nevada. The clinic is operated on UNLV's campus and doubles as a teaching, uh, training, and research uh, clinic for faculty and students in the colleges of education and liberal arts. Stay tuned for more developments about the medical school and the whole academic health center as the year progresses. Now you've also heard me talk a lot in the last two or three years about uh, the stadium project for UNLV. I firmly believe that UNLV needs a stadium. It needs, uh, it needs to be part of our campus and we will get there. But you may have also heard that we have stretched out our timeline for this project. As important as a stadium is, and as much as a new stadium will contribute to life on campus and better connect us to the community, we have to make certain choices about priorities. Right now, as we move forward on the path to Tier 1, our top priority is for the new medical school, which is why we are placing the stadium project on a longer timeline. In addition uh, to our medical school and our overall path to Tier 1, working to improve our community, our increased ability to innovate will touch people's lives in all sorts of ways. For example, we have recently unveiled plans for a new master's program in urban leadership, a revival and enhancement uh, of the educational leadership program that was affected during recession era cuts. This program, built through a strong partnership with the Clark County School District, will, st will start next spring uh, and is designed to prepare future school and civic leaders to meet the complex challenges of urban communities like Las Vegas. Uh, and here is another uh, concrete example of something happening right now as an illustration of the ways in which our innovation already changes lives and creates even a greater promise for the future. You may, you may have uh, read about a four-year-old girl, Haley Dawson, who has a hand with only a thumb and a pinky. Her mother, Young Dawson, uh, reached out to UNLV engineers to see if they could help develop a robo-hand for Haley. 
I'm pleased to say that they did. Dr. Brendan O'Toole, Professor and Chair of Mechanical Engineering, and Dr. Mohamed Tabia, the Associate Dean for Research, Graduate Studies in Computing, and a Professor of Mechanical Engineering, worked with students from here and from other universities to get Haley her new hand. She'll need uh, new robo hands as she grows, but her ability to use her new hand started here at UNLV. Haley, Mrs. Dawson, uh, and Professors O'Toole and Trebia, uh, can you please uh, stand and be recognized? I'll take a deep breath. That was very nice. Uh, and, here, and here's yet another example. Uh, earlier uh, this year, uh, Dr. Paul O. left Drexel University to join our Department of Mechanical Engineering as a Lindsay Professor of Unmanned Autonomous Systems. He is clear, clearly uh, one of the world's preeminent experts in UAVs and robotics technology. His involvement in advanced research uh, related to robotics, along with uh, international competition uh, related to this field, is one of the key accomplishments of his career, and he's bringing that expertise and those accomplishments to UNLV. The DARPA Challenge, and DARPA, D-A-R-P-A, -A, stands for Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, focuses on creating a robot with the ability to act as a first responder uh, uh, for disasters that may be too dangerous uh, for humans. The humanoid ro uh, robot, or HUBO, is a significant prospect for becoming a first responder in that regard. Doc, uh, Dr. O uh, will lead UNLV's team in the upcoming international competition, which is expected to have President Obama and Japan's, uh, Japan's Prime Minister uh, Abe uh, in attendance. It's a really big deal. Let me give you a feel for the magnitude of this project by showing you a clip of how, uh, how DARPA describes Dr. O's project. And just remember that every reference to Drexel in this video will now become a reference to UNLV. So our robot design is Hubo, which is a somewhat of a mature platform. It's about the size of a 10-year-old boy. It has about the form and function of a boy. And we feel that it has all the movements that a boy could possibly do with these type of events. Our team has over 200 person years of humanoid experience. We believe it's a dream team. Our partner institutions include KAIST in Korea, Georgia Tech, Ohio State, Purdue as well as Indiana University, Columbia, WPI, Swarthmore, and the University of Delaware. We're really a band of brothers uh, that I've known um, for almost all of my career. So these are trusted entities, proven performers, and I wouldn't want to go into a challenge like this with anybody else. What makes Hubo best suited for the tasks for the challenge? I believe is one, it is an open architecture, both in hardware and software. And what that means is that there's nothing hidden under the hood. Hubo is a humanoid that was developed by KAIST, which is a university in Korea back in 2000. And it went through several evolutions and versions. So why will our team win this robotics challenge? Uh, it will be divine providence. <laughs> Thank you, I'm so proud to have Dr. Uh, o being part of our team today. But there's so much more. For example, UNLV will partner with the Association of American Colleges and Universities in leading a national project focused on increasing access to college for historically underserved students. 
The UNLV University Libraries have been awarded a large multi-year grant from the National Endowment of the Humanities, something that's incredibly special for this university. And Professor uh, Martin Schiller has been named the Executive Director of the new UNLV Quantitative Health Sciences Initiative. That initiative has been funded with $2.5 million from the state's uh, Knowledge Fund and is designed to build excellence and research capabilities at the university and in the state by leveraging industry partnerships, current strengths at UNLV, and existing infrastructure. Dr. Schiller, uh, please stand and be recognized. UNL, UNLV already has countless stories like the ones I've highlighted today, and the handouts that you've all received when you came in today describe more of these achievements. These are just a few examples of how UNLV changes lives here and how much more it will be able to do as a Tier 1 university. What we know about Tier 1 universities is that they can double or even tri triple uh, our economic impact in the region. When UNLV becomes Tier 1, we expect our economic impact, which has been estimated at about a billion and a half dollars today, to go up to as much as $4.5 billion. That will affect all of us, not just here on campus, not just in Las Vegas, but throughout uh, Nevada and beyond. There's probably no better example of how UNLV has connected beyond the Las Vegas area than our internationally recognized William F. Hara College of Hotel Administration. 20 years from now, that connection will be even greater. We will truly be the intellectual hub for global gaming and hospitality here at UNLV. Since, uh, since Governor Sandoval and the Nevada Legislature approved the planning funds for a new academic building for the Hotel College in the, in the legislative session in 2013, we have been busy raising private funding and moving forward toward obtaining uh, the state support for that building in the 2015 legislative session. I'm proud of the collaboration between Dean Stowe Shoemaker's team at the Hotel College and David Fromer's planning and construction team in preparing us to proceed with the building that will truly enhance our position as the world leader in hospitality education. If I had to sum up UNLV as a Tier 1 Carnegie Research Very High Institution 20 years from now, I would say that it will be a place where we will all want our kids and our grandkids to go to school, where our faculty and staff will look forward to coming to work and discovering new ways to make things better, and where people from all over the world will look uh, to us as we develop the specific expertise that can only come from being located right here in Las Vegas. That's my vision of UNLV 20 years from now, and now let's talk about how we're going to get there. As I stated at the beginning of my, my address today, every time that I've been faced with moving an organization forward in significant ways, I have started with this model or a variation on it. I believe that uh, change, especially systemic change, uh, uh, only happens when you think strategically about how to make it happen and then execute accordingly. Normally, uh, I would have this chart and it would show uh, the situational assessment in the top circle here, not in the, the next circle. But it's a bit different here. Uh, at UNLV, the foundation has been laid for Tier 1 for quite a while now. President Carol Harder started us on this path by positioning us as a research university during her 11 years as UNLV's president. And her successors have taken us further in that regard. President David Ashley brought his engineering background to strengthen that commitment. President Neil Samatrisk brought his uh, planning expertise and his leadership to sharpen the focus and to label the vision as Tier 1. We know that we want to be a Tier 1 Carnegie Research Very High University. That means that we can look at our situational assessment a bit differently than we may have otherwise done had that vision not been so clearly established. We already know the general markers of a Tier 1 university, so the first thing that we have to do is to develop a clearer sense of where we are uh, now, uh, where we need to go, and how we're going to get there. To help us in this phase of our path to Tier 1, uh, in fact, to help with the complete process displayed in this model, we've engaged academic leadership associates to guide our discussions and help in our analysis. Academic leadership associates brings us the advantage of people who have played key roles in advancing the University of Southern California over the past two decades, and more recently with a number of universities uh, throughout our country. 
The, co uh, the company is also familiar with UNLV, having worked closely with the Lee Business School to assist in the development of its strategic plan last year. Mark Robeson from Academic Leadership Associates is in the audience today. Mark, will you please stand so, that the, uh, so we can introduce you to our audience. Working with ALA will be two committees, the Tier 1 Initiative Executive Committee and the Tier 1 Initiative Committee. The Executive Committee, whose membership is displayed on the screen behind me, is charged with working with uh, ALA to determine the critical issues uh, that UNLV must address to achieve Tier 1 status, to identify key metrics to be used in tracking our progress toward that vision, and to develop the core strategies to achieve our goals. Members of the Executive Committee will chair subcommittees of the broader Tier 1 Initiative uh, Committee. The list of subcommittees is displayed behind me now. That subcommittee structure will ensure that the Executive Committee accomplishes its work with timely input and complete input from a broad range of relevant constituencies. Will the members of the Executive Committee who are here with us today please stand as a group so that we can recognize and thank you. Working hand in hand with the Executive Committee and LA, uh, ALA will be the broader Tier 1 Initiative Committee. This committee is intentionally quite large because we want to make sure that all of, this, all of our stakeholders have a chance to weigh in on the issue of how we move forward on our path to Tier 1. Because of the size of this committee, I'll refer you to the Tier 1 uh, website uh, for the specific membership and the complete membership and we'll follow up with an announcement to the campus community that provides a link to this website. Will the members of the Tier 1 Initiative Committee or who are here with us today please rise so that we may recognize and thank you. Thank you. I, truly, I truly thank the members of both uh, committees for their willingness to serve uh, in this very important process. Helping me with this process is Nancy Rappaport, my senior advisor and the Gordon Silver uh, Professor of Law uh, at, at the William S. Uh, Boyd School of Law. She's actually behind stage right now helping me with some of the logistics. She brings to this position significant faculty and administrative experience, having served as the dean of two law schools before coming to UNLV and having served as interim dean of the Boyd School of Law uh, here at UNLV. Her research area includes the study of how incentives shape behavior, and I'm glad to have her as part of the team. She has also recently added a new honor for those of you that are keeping track. Uh, earlier this month, she and her dance teacher became national dance uh, champions in the United States Dance Championships. Congratulations to Nancy for this <laughs> wonderful accomplishment. Once we have undergone the situa situational assessment, we will develop the success metrics and set the goals and objectives that will sharpen our focus. I already have a sense of some of these metrics, the goals and objectives that we need, but the Tier 1 committees will be tasked with defining and refining them further. We will then develop the core strategies and action plans that will move us toward Tier 1. You have heard me talk about the medical school, uh, about research and economic development, about recruiting and retaining students and faculty and ensuring their success, and about the campus master plan, core strategies which will help make all of uh, this initiative happen. Again, our Tier 1 committee uh, will, uh, committees will refine and possibly broaden uh, these four strategies. Once we've determined the appropriate core strategies and the action plans, to make Tier 1 a reality, it will then be time to ask ourselves if we're truly built for success, both strategically and operationally. Those are the next parts of this model. Do we have the right organizational structure, the right people in the right places, and the right support structures and resources to position us for success? Finally, I firmly believe that if you can't measure something, you can't manage it, so we will develop a report card uh, which we can use uh, as we move forward uh, toward Tier 1 status and beyond to monitor and report back to you on how we're doing. Overall, what we're doing this year is, is laying a stronger, more informed foundation on which to build. 
to more effectively be able to move toward uh, a, being a true tier one Carnegie Research Very High University. But let's talk about how you, all of you in the audience, and throughout this campus and our community will be part of the whole process. As I have already mentioned, we have created our tier one committees to make sure that you have the opportunity to tell us what you think, what's working, what we must improve, and what we must change. We need you to participate in these meetings, in these surveys, the town halls, and other discussions. Please note uh, uh, the dates of October 1st and October 2nd because we'll start the outreach process then. And we'll find additional times and additional ways to hear from you. Please, uh, please too, note October 3rd. Uh, on that date, at 11.30 a.m., in the SCB uh, uh, auditorium, the Vice President for Research and Economic Development, Tom Piotta, uh, and the Research Council will host a luncheon uh, to update the campus and the community on research and economic devel development activities here at UNLV. I will be there as well to welcome you uh, to the event, and I look forward to seeing you there. We will, of course, more formally communicate these uh, and other dates to you and your colleagues as we move through this process. It truly is time to take stock of where we are and to put plans in place to realize the dreams that we all share. We've been through a lot, especially during the Great Recession, and I know that things have been tough, but we've made it through with purpose and with a vision for what we can, in fact, what we must become. To the campus community, uh, thank you for your dedication and your commitment during these incredibly challenging times. Many of you have already thought about ways that we could do things differently. We need to hear from you. Uh, please don't sit on the sidelines. If we're going to be different 20 years from now, we have to start down that road immediately so that we can hand off to the next president a UNLV that is better positioned uh, to take us on our path to Tier 1. When I think about our history, I think about how many incredible things have been accomplished in just over 50 years here at UNLV. Take another look at the handout of some of our achievements just during this past year alone. I look forward to you joining me, joining all of us at UNLV, as we take the next great strides forward. I love this university. Even more, I love what this university can become. Thank you again for your time and attention today, and I look forward to your active involvement. I wish each of you the best. And now, let's uh, welcome Hey Reb, to help us celebrate the launch of this new academic year.